Hello, welcome Eric Bunks, Vintage Sportsman. Today we're going to show you a little bit about horn rattling and uh, give you some tips and techniques on what kind of horns to use, um, the amount of aggression to use, and uh, just little details about horn rattling. One of my subscribers uh, asked me a question about this, so I wanted to elaborate. So uh, stay tuned and we're going to go into that with a couple of minutes. We'll go into that segment and uh, show you what we got, so stay tuned. Okay guys, here we are. <clears throat> we'll discuss some rattling horns today. There's a couple different types. Um, <clears throat> what we have here is just a set of rattling horns where I, I cut the tips off of them. And I don't want them to be a big buck. Um, sometimes I'll even use smaller horns because you don't want to intimidate another deer coming in. So you don't want a buck coming in and if you hear two giant bucks battling it out, uh, that deer may become intimidated and it may cause him to back off if it's a smaller buck so you don't want to do that so try to use reasonable size horns and you cut the tips off and use a pair of gloves and uh, that's a, a good tip there and try to use pretty fresh antlers so they don't have a dull thud to them and that's that's a pretty decent idea and you can tell when they they have a good mesh to them you know but uh, sometimes like I said the smaller the buck the better and then there's another type they call a black rack and this is a, a decent setup too because it, it, the way you can grip these horns they're kind of set up to where you can grip them just right and they don't kind of hurt your hands you can, they have a good sound to them you can mesh them you want you want to grind and mesh them and and uh, they just got a good sound to them and they don't kind of beat up your your fingers that way so this is a, a good setup called a black rack and it came with a deer call and what it is is a couple of different settings on there if you can see that and what I try to do is grunt but what you want to do is use a setting that's not like a mature buck I wouldn't because once again you don't want to intimidate any deer coming in to think it's too big of a bucket that's you, you want it to seem beatable so if that buck is coming in and he thinks there's a doe that there that is in the area while these two bucks are fighting over this doe he doesn't want to come in and, and uh and get whooped so he wanted to be you want it to be a beatable situation for that deer he wants to go with the mindset like oh these are two small deer i can take them so that's what you want to kind of think about but um but yeah whether whatever size rack you, you, you choose or whichever whether you go with natural horns or not um the main thing is is uh to use them just in a, in a short sequence because most of the time deer fights do not last long you never usually very very seldom do they last very long so you try to just picture what two deer be doing in their mind you know and they would you know just I always start off just ticking them like they're just sizing each other up and they're just kind of touching horns a little bit and pushing then you push back and then you push the other way I mean, you got to picture psychologically what's going on. At the same time, you know, you want to move brush around. You could take the tips of the horns, antlers rather. I shouldn't call them horns. Horns and antlers are different things, but I don't get in trouble for that one. But uh, you move a little bit of brush so it sounds like there's actually two deer. You know, you want it to sound natural. And another good thing that I do is you always take the, these backs of the horns and you beat them on the ground like hooves, you know, thumping, thumping, because you'll. You can tell when you hear deer run, you'll hear them thumping across the ground. So you get on the ground, and that turns a buck to really make them feel that there's two deer really fighting. And you don't want to make too much noise. You want to overdo it, but you want to just do short sequences to where just, you know, picture it in your head. Or even if you go on, uh, just watch a couple of buck fights on YouTube, any footage anybody has, and watch what the deer do and how they react. And you can picture it in your mind by watching real deer spar with each other how they do it you know they would just start off ticking and then they might you know start going into it and, and grind a little bit you know and grind and grind and then back off a little bit and you know I try to hit them and you know get really into it for a little bit and then eventually move the brush around and then just rake them not like that <laughs> rake them and then and then uh, maybe back off a little bit. So 
you know, you make up your own sequence once every once, and then you wait a while because it, the deer may take an hour to come in. It could be they could run right in, or it could be an hour. So you really gotta watch. So, uh, but it's a really experiment with your time, how long each of your rattle and segments, you know, goes on for. You know, but uh, but this these tend to these horns will you'll beat up your knuckles a little bit like I just did, so that that black rack is a little better. And then you just do your, you know, you put it on uh, just like a young buck, like two small bucks fighting. You don't want to make it super mature buck like I was saying. And um, sometimes what you can do is when you're not rattling horns, you could do like a tending grunt, like a buck is running through the woods chasing an estrus doe, and he these Primos cans, this is the, the big the big one, uh, the great big can they call it. And you can have a, like a deer's running through the woods and just chasing along. And then just do a series of just like she's moaning going along or just, you know, giving it a little bit of a you know, a series of bleats, and that buck's just running, sniffing, and going, you know, and um, that that's a effective way to call, too, besides horn rattle. So it seems like they're chasing when they're in the chase mode. So these two work hand in hand, so, you know, that's a, and I like this big one. The smaller ones, uh, there's a couple different brands that I like that seems to be a little bit more quality. I mean, this is quality, but there's some of them that aren't as loose inside you can feel the the how tight it is inside there the, the mechanism inside and this one works pretty good i like this one but you just give it that and that's like a doe running along just saying she's ready and she's an estrus so that buck's just trailing along so that's another good tactic to use but um yeah that's the main thing i mean these are these are definitely knuckle savers i mean you know these things are these things are good, and you could do the same thing. You know, just tick them, and these got a good tone to them. Tick, and then you can you can mesh them and, and grind them a lot better than a real deer rack. But uh, yeah, you just sequence, and then you can you know rake rake some you know a nearby tree and some brush. And, uh, and just do your sequence that way. And just, like I said, picture two deer fighting and just do a short segment. And um, that's basically what you have to do for a deer fight, any experiment, you know what I mean? Nothing's ever 100%. Certain things, you know, like I said, you're, you're, you, you can experiment different things that work for you or your particular area. But uh, I just keep the segment short and then maybe, you know, do one and then maybe a half hour later do another segment just like two deer and then you know have some I like to have a little bit of brush I usually in a blind anyway so I can kind of hit the brush a little bit but I want to watch my movement because like that other deer I rattled in that deer came could come right in at that moment or it could be an hour later so you really got to watch and you got to listen because many times I've rattled in and the deer didn't come in but over the the edge of the the woods where I was I was on top of a knoll you could hear a deer grunting and he was you can hear them going back and forth, back and forth. So, um, you know, you really got to be on high alert and just be ready and just have fun. And, and you got to have faith in it. You know, you're always taught to sit in the woods and be quiet, which always works good. But you got to have faith in it because some days it, you, you may not get anything for, for weeks at a time. You, it just may not work. But it works, as P. Fiducia says, it works often enough that it can be a really good tool in your tool bag where... You know, you could sit there and there could be a deer over the next ridge and you may never know he's there, but if you call him in, I mean, be aggressive. I mean, sometimes you have to go and bring the deer to you and you have to just, uh, you know, just try it. Take one season and say this season during the rut, I'm just going to rattle every single day. Move your locations um, and then use a little bit of scent too. That's another good tip Pete Fiducia always said is he has interdigital scent which goes between, which is the gland in between the hooves of the deer. Now, when deer are alerted or they're, you know, they'll, they'll uh, stomp their foot, they're putting down that scent. 
So that inner digital scent on the ground is just another way for that buck, if he smells that, to believe that there's a real fight going on because the deer hooves are going and the deer is releasing that scent. So you have the scent, you have the sight, and the sound, you know, that deer, and he, you know, well, not the sight, but the, the sound and the scent. And then, you know, if you have a deer decoy that you have and you want to use, that's the third part, you know, unless you're, you've got to watch, you know, being in public land with that, you got to be careful, but um, but because you'll attract other hunters too, so you really got to be safe. But um, but that's basically horn rattling there. That that's what you have to do. So I hope this helped you. And as far as the sequence, I'm going to show you a sequence, a couple of short sequences of just deer pushing each other around and fighting. I don't have any sound with it, unfortunately, but you get the idea of kind of what they do and you know they they'll push and they'll push and they'll push and then then they'll they might scrap it out and get into it and then they'll just they'll separate so you got to kind of psychologically think about two deer and how exactly they'd be fighting and the more footage you watch of deer actually fighting the more you can make the sequence sound real and you can you know beat the hooves on the ground and, and move the brush you know but just you know, and, uh, and do the best you can. So uh, I just want to wish you good luck, and I hope this answered your questions. And uh, really, just, just give it a try, because it works, and um, you, will have a, you will have a blast, I guarantee you. Was that, was that hunt exciting? Boy, them rattling horns, let me tell you. You think it's only for Texas or out west or Midwest? It works in New Jersey, you know. Um, I have to give credit to Peter J. Fiducia. If you can ever watch uh, The Deer Doctor, if you ever read his books or see his videos, um, that's who I, you know, learned about horn rattling from. And uh, the old timers, Noel Feather, you remember Noel Feather from back in the day. You know, I watched all those guys, you know, and, um, you know, you mess around and experiment. You know, I'm not an expert horn rattler. I just mess around and see what, what I see in the videos and things like that. And you see that deer came in, and uh, and it was just, uh, you know, a buck that wasn't legal. I couldn't shoot him because he has to have three on one side in my zone, and uh, it just happened so fast. 
But uh, we're back at the cabin now. We're going to make some dinner and get a fire going because it's cold and rainy out there now. So, uh, but I just, it was just exciting just to see the reaction. Um, now, I don't know if it comes up through on camera, but when that deer came through, he was breathing heavy and he was just uh, had his mouth halfway open and he was looking. And I don't know if that comes through on the camera or not. I haven't looked at the footage yet, but it was just happened so fast. It was exciting. And uh, just to see the deer react to the grunting and the rattling horn. So, uh, so guys, you know, wherever you're at, just, just try things, you know, experiment. So that was an exciting hunt. So we didn't get them, you know, it wasn't a legal deer, but... But uh, still, that's the part of hunting. It was it was a fun time. So hope you enjoyed it, and uh, we'll be on to our next hunt and uh, see what happens. Hopefully, we get one. And if not, you know, it, it's part of the <laughs> it's the breaks, you know. So uh, so we'll stay tuned, and we'll see what happens next. Welcome to the Practical Sportsman's Corner, and uh, you guys know about saving money. If you want to have some tips and tricks, uh, if you're in an area where there's hemlocks, nice hemlock woods, which we have right here, and if you see this hemlock right here, you get a nice thick hemlock bough, and you rub that on your clothes and on your gloves. You get a nice hemlock smell, the oils in here. Um, I don't believe you can cover human scent totally. I don't. I just think deer can differentiate. They can pick out so many different smells, but it doesn't hurt to smell like part of the woods. So you do everything you can. You know, you play the wind. Um, if you want to use a commercially, via, you know, brand cover scent, commercially available. Um, but just as much to smell like the woods as much as you can. But uh, it's just cheap and it's readily available if you're in a hemlock woods and it works great it works great for blind building as you as you've seen so uh you know it's just one of those little tips and tricks and uh and it smells pleasant it's not a foul odor or anything like that i've worn cover scents and uh <laughs> walked into the local grocery store forgetting after a hunt to go buy something and everybody's looking around going what's that smell it was me <laughs> so so at least this won't offend people which is good we don't need to offend anybody so uh so there you go there's your practical sportsman cheapo eric bunk cheap tip of the day so, so <laughs> there you go folks good luck and good hunting okay that's all for our show tonight uh just wanted to say thank you for everybody coming to the channel and i hope you enjoyed this episode of eric bunk's vintage sportsman thanks for watching